Good morning, everyone. I hope you have been adequately warmed up by the incredible exercises we have all just done. I don't know about you, but I am exhausted. Now, you may have noticed that I am on my own this morning. Um, Father Pius is celebrating one of the masses um, across Milton Keynes. I have mass a bit later, but I was able to be with you this morning. However, however, I would like to introduce my newest co-host, some of you may already know him, the incredible Mr. Neil Roseman. <laughs> yeah! Hello, Hello everybody! Hello, Father Brendan. How are you doing? Yeah, great, thank good. you. Really good, really good. Um, I notice, Father, you don't seem to be particularly out of breath. Um, actually, I, I, I'm really healthy. I have, uh, yeah, so it takes me a long time to sweat. <laughs> and so I like, think you're more the Claire version of exercise than the peat version of exercise. Although I do think Pete just stuck that blue strip on his legs just prior to, <laughs> to doing the exercise. I don't think that's a necessary thing, Pete. So how was yesterday? Well, yesterday, um, just for the sake of Neil, was incredible. We had an amazing talk with Fran who reflected really on pandemic life and what mm. it means to have valour in the midst of the kind of difficult situations we're all in, the kind of the struggles we're all going through. I think that's something we can agree with. Uh, we also learned how to pray the Angelus with Rick and Lydia. We were led with amazing worship. Um, we had an incredible talk by Steve. I mean, I don't know about you, but I am so impressed by St. Jose Sanchez del Rio, this incredible 14-year-old Martin who was so filled with courage, mm. uh, so filled with valor that he he willingly gave up his life mm. for the faith. Um, so as well as kind of wanting to kind of be that sort of person, I also want to be a Marine. Uh, like of course Steve. you do. Of course you do. Yeah, so. He would be ringing that bell quicker than you know. Yes. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I said, yeah, I mean, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. Father Brendan, it's seven o'clock, you've got to get up. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Yeah, it was great. And I joined you last night, actually, online for uh, adoration. It was great to see uh, Father David all the way from Corby leading us into that time of, uh, of prayer before the, uh, the Blessed Sacrament in your chapel. Yeah, that right. was lovely right. to see yourself and Father Pius uh, at home. Beautiful. And then to see you last night, many of you uh, last night on Zoom. And of course, the, uh, the, the pandemic being a topic of conversation at the moment. Mm -hmm. Zoom has been very much uh, part of our lives now, isn't it? Who'd have thought this time last year we'd all be going, yeah, Zoom, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. Now, given the fact that um, we are living through this pandemic, that we have been asked to have that grace, that valour from God himself, mm -hmm. I was wondering if it's time for a quiz. Maybe. Always time for a quiz. Definitely time for a quiz, boys. Good to see you this morning. And now look, I want to play the game, the little TikTok game. I need you to pick both hands up and we're going to put a finger down. Okay, so I'm going to go through our lockdown life together. Oh my goodness, what a year we had. What a luck we had. Um, so yeah, guys, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Ten fingers up. Yep. Put a finger down if you baked banana bread. Put a finger down if you went on a Boris walk. I want you to put a finger down if you painted something, anything, in your house. <laughs> and you need to put a finger down, Father Brendan, if you signed up to Disney+. Plus. <laughs> I want you to put a finger down if you played jigsaw puzzles. What about putting a finger down for getting involved with a Zoom quiz with family or friends? Definitely in my house. I want you to put a finger down if you ate your feelings. Yeah, yeah that's a strong one. Man. Always. Yeah. Always. I want you to put a finger down if you discovered a love of exercise. Father Brendan, I hope you didn't put a finger down. <laughs> the what? I want you to put a finger down. Pete, you, finger down. Put a finger down if you think you completed Netflix. And lastly, put a finger down if you attended Mass in your pyjamas. I think that well, Father Brendan probably did. <laughs> <laughs> Under my album. <laughs> the whole of Milton Keynes are going, yeah, you did, Father. <laughs> yeah, you did. Good stuff, well done, boys. I got four. What about you? Uh, I got. I, I pretty much did everything. I completed <laughs> lockdown. <laughs> I have done lockdown. So coming up next, we have an incredible input from some of the leaders that you will know from previous Lux Weekends. They wanted to share some of their stories, their encouragement to help us basically take on board this topic, this theme of valor, and how we can live that out in our lives. And after that, at midday, 12 o'clock, uh, we're going back to Rick and Lydia uh, for the Angelus and some praise, followed by Mass with Bishop David in his private chapel in his house. 
um, which is a real honour for us to be there at two o'clock. And then we'll see you again at three o'clock. Uh, so until then, goodbye. See you later. and share with you a little bit about my word of the year which is something that kind of bore fruit within prayer during advent and that word is fearless which is a really great word for this weekend um, when we're thinking all about being brave in our faith and there's one particular woman who comes to mind when I think of fearless and it's someone who's a real warrior a real uh, warrior mother you might say and that's this girl here Mary. Um, this beautiful card sits on my dressing table. So every morning when I'm getting ready for my day, um, I'm thinking about about Mary and wishing that I can model her as, as well as I can during my day. And there's a really great way to be able to journey more with Mary so that she can lead us to her son Jesus. And that's through my favourite prayer. Need these? For the rosary and at the beginning of this crazy season um it was all a bit mad really um not gonna lie didn't really know what was going on um being a complete extrovert it was really hard to not be able to spend time with so many people who mean a lot to me and there was a lot of uncertainty in the days and the weeks but there was one thing that gave me some some peace and some certainty and that was praying the rosary i heard a beautiful quote a few months ago um which was the rosary is my life's anchor and oh my goodness that's so true for my own life and the rosary is just such a beautiful way for us to be led to jesus by reflecting on jesus's life jesus's ministry and, and mary wants to do that as our heavenly mother so i just really encourage you to Maybe if you've never prayed the rosary before, check out our Instagram channel. Uh, the handle is Lux Nimo, and there you can find our Advent Rosary series where you'll get to listen and pray along, learn a bit more about the prayer and also hear some fantastic testimony about the rosary because it is powerful, so powerful. Um, so take care, everybody, and hope to see you really soon. <laughs>
opened my Bible properly in a while. And so to be able to spend that time really um, spending quality time with Jesus and, and praying over the words in the Bible, it was just really nice and it definitely helped me to get through. My kind of my my piece of advice and it was something I, I took up during lockdown was journaling and you know this weekend we've heard about bravery and, and the strength of God and I spent a bit of time reminding myself that that I am clothed in the strength of God just like we're all clothed in the strength of God and so in my journal and in my bible I was highlighting and writing down pieces of scripture that just reminded me of that so that it was a constant reminder wherever I looked um, that God was always with me um, and was always willing to give me and again to give us all the strength that we need to get through. I just really wanted to uh, encourage you to take time this lockdown. Take time for yourself. Uh, I think if you're like me, I like to have lots of things planned in. Uh, and this time has really encouraged me to see that um, actually it's really good to have slots to just have some free time. Time to look after yourself. Time to be still. Time to maybe uh, do something new. But also set realistic goals in that. And so perhaps instead of thinking that we've had stuff taken away from us, maybe we've actually been given this gift of time. And I really want you to encourage you to think about uh, why have you been given that gift of time? And what's God trying to say to you uh, in that gift? Hi, my name's uh, Pete, I'm 30 years old and I'm a secondary school science teacher. Um, so... In terms of advice on handling lockdown um, and also kind of being brave and, and courageous was actually to to not try to be. So I found that it was much easier to just focus on the day-to-day -day rather than thinking about the, the, the big stuff that was scary and the uncertainty and was just handling each day at a time. And then in that, just focusing on what the next thing was and so being bothered to do whatever the next right thing was I'd, I'd, I've since having children particularly I've kind of taken on a mantra of you have to be bothered as a, as a parent I found I'd, I, it wasn't acceptable to me to say oh I can't be bothered anymore or I can't be bothered because if I'm not bothered with my children then then actually th they will lose out and so then taking that into lockdown it was like well I have to be bothered to to get up each day and to 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 focus on that day and to go out and exercise I did a lot of exercise in lockdown it was like I've got to be bothered to do that so then I'll feel like I've achieved something and I can move on to the next thing and then in my work as well making sure that I just focused on the little things bothered to get those right so that then um, by the time I'd kind of done lots of little things, actually I'd achieved a day or, or I'd achieved kind of a, a bigger, longer term target. But generally I find that if I try and just focus on these big things then it gets really, um, kind of that can get really scary and you just feel overwhelmed by it. But if I focus on the little things and be bothered to do the little things and do the little things right, then actually um, the big things will ultimately take care of themselves. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Tom. Jesus is referred to as Emmanuel. Now Emmanuel means God is with us. Someone might, have, might say that they're going to run a marathon and then you donate to that cause. And that's really good. But imagine the impact that you would have on that person if you said, no, instead of, a, instead of donating, I'm going to run with you. I'm going to be there with you every step of the way. And when you feel like giving up, you will have me to fall back on. We're going to encourage each other. We're going to motivate each other and we will get through this. So think about during this lockdown, how you could be with somebody and the impact that that would make. Obviously, it's a bit harder uh, to be with people during lockdown physically, but think about how you could, uh, how you could still support them by joining their cause. Be creative, be inventive, but most of all, be with somebody. Hi everyone, Casey here. Um, and something that's really been helping me through lockdown is trying to keep Sunday as a holy day. Um, so I wanted to share my top three tips for doing that. Um, so the first one is to stay off social media, um, at least until I've been to mass or spent some time with the Lord in prayer. 
Um, we all know how easy it is to spend hours just scrolling and it really distracts us from what's most important. Um, so I know it might sound crazy, but I really urge you um, to just stay away from social media, especially on a Sunday, um, until you've spent some time with the Lord in prayer. Um, tip number two is to have that dedicated prayer time on a Sunday. So really set aside that time that you're going to connect with the Lord, um, whether it's going to mass um, in person or virtually, um, reading the scriptures, praying the rosary, even just going on a walk um, with a good praise and worship playlist. They're all really good ways to just connect with the Lord and really give him that time, um, especially on a Sunday. And tip number three is to rest. Um, I think that's something that we all kind of struggle with, um, especially with spending so much time at home now. Um, it can be hard to separate that time for work and time for rest. So um, choose something that you really enjoy that you can rest in, um, whether it's baking, spending time with family, going on a walk, um, just choose something that you can rest in um, and don't be worrying about the week ahead or what it might bring, um, but just allow yourself to rest in the Lord and trust that he will provide everything that you need. Um, and allow him to just fill you up for the week ahead. So they're my top three lockdown tips. Um, staying off social media on a Sunday, having dedicated time for prayer, and really resting on a Sunday. Um, so I hope that can help you through this time of lockdown. Hi guys, I'm Ria. So I just wanted to share with you something that I've been doing since the beginning of the year that I found really helpful. Um, so I've been listening to the Bible in a Year podcast with Father Mike Schmitz. Um, and it's been really interesting uh, hearing about like the fathers of our faith in the book of Genesis. Uh, people that our faith is built on and that we often think of as the perfect people. Um, and these are the people that God chose to make a covenant with again and again. And who God was there with um, and present in their lives. But they all came from a broken families. They all did things that God wasn't pleased with, and yet he still chose them to create our faith from and um, to be with at all times. So I guess it's really encouraging, and I want to encourage you as well, that no matter what brokenness we come to God with, he'll take that and turn it into something uh, more beautiful, and we don't need to worry. Hi everyone, my name is Jay. I just wanted to take a moment to talk about valour. Valour is a kind of courageous bravery. To be a person of valour is to be someone who knows God intimately and through God is a person of integrity and reliability, someone who is trustworthy and dependable. A person of valour is someone who perseveres in difficult situations and is someone who knows that even in times of hardship, God is always there. That is particularly important these days as we go through another period of lockdown. Life has changed so much in the past year but the knowledge that God is there by my side has helped me, even when things were looking hopeless. God is always there. He doesn't change. He's always reliable. I can always depend on him. Finally, I just wanted to say the most important characteristic of a person of valour is to be a person of prayer. So be rooted in prayer. Pray always and trust in God. Stay close to God and he will give you all the strength and courage you need. God bless. Hey guys, my name is Liv and um, Becky asked me to say a few things about trying to stay centred and Christian in the current pandemic circumstances. Um, and I don't know if you know, but so I'm living up in Scotland and in Scotland at the moment, um, we're not allowed to go to church worship is off for all denominations so my advice is that my church at the moment is nature and um at the weekend especially on sundays for me to get away from all the negativity is to go out into nature and realize all of the good that is still in the world that god created um that we kind of forget about at the moment with all the bad press and people being mean to each other sometimes it's best to just get out and get away from it and that's what's keeping me sane for the last year of lockdown has been a bit of a challenge for all of us in different ways and i think two of the ways that i've got through it all have been one to take a, a walk every day uh, half an hour an hour a walk um, and it's done a few things for me really it's helped me to 
um, kind of just stay focused in my head, get a time of reflection, been a great time of prayer, um, kept my energy levels up. And I suppose it just gave me that sense of staying sane in the midst of what was maybe a very difficult time for a, a lot of us. And the other thing was to be aware of those others who might be in greater need than me, just to be aware of people who might be good to be connected to, obviously wisely and healthily keeping the, the appropriate distancing, but, but connecting in with them to support them as, as best as is possible. A way of, I suppose, just being aware that uh, God's love is real through us when we share it uh, with each other. And as we're journeying forward, I've been kind of thinking, okay, I need to do something to sustain me now on this journey. And uh, I've been really struck um, by the, the need to maybe re reflect on the Bible, the word of God a bit more. And so I've engaged with uh, Father Mike Schmitz. I don't know if you've heard of him, um, his uh, Bible in a Year podcast. That's just been really inspiring. I'm listening to it every morning as I'm shaving and getting ready for the day. And it's really kind of given me a focus for the day, which is a really helpful thing. Uh, so, yeah, please, God, as we move forward, these things and many more that we're able to kind of build into our daily lives will, will help us to walk bravely, courageously with God. Bless you all. And I hope you're finding this weekend just as fun and inspiring as we are. During lockdown, I found it sometimes helped me just to stop and to take a breath, to breathe in and to breathe out, just to focus myself again. And to remember that there is a world out there. There are people and hopefully very soon I'll be able to meet those people again. And so I love planning all the things that we might do when we next meet up. And I think the idea of hoping, trusting and communicating is really important. And I encourage you to keep trusting, keep hoping, keep communicating with each other, with other people and with God. Because I think at the moment, that's probably the bravest and most courageous thing that we can be doing. A few weeks ago, um, I went to Mass um, and there was a lady who sat quite a distance away and she started to cough persistently. <laughs> oh my Lord, so many emotions um, passed through me and I literally wanted the floor to open up to swallow me and rescue me from this. Um, the sad thing is that in that second when i felt all of those emotions i did not realize the presence i was in i forgot for a few seconds why i was there the need to be there having that opportunity to receive the eucharist in flesh and to be around the other um church community members of the church community who were there. I had to remind myself of whose presence I was in and the fact that I did need to be there for my spiritual well-being, for my emotional well-being and for my mental well-being. As Christians, having valor, great courage, does not mean we don't feel anxious and frightened at times. That emotion is a sign of being alive and being sensitive to the pain and death, the suffering around us. Having valour means that you know who you belong to and you know no weapons formed against you shall ever prosper, even death. You know you are the child of the living God. I am the child of the living God. Our Lord conquered death. And his plans for us are always for our good to prosper us, even when it doesn't feel like it at times. Hi everybody, I'm Neve. I hope you're having a great weekend so far. So when I think of courage, I think of hope. Because let's face it, you can't be courageous or brave about anything unless you have a sense of hope. Unless you have a sense that tomorrow or something in the future is going to be better than today so to try and keep me going during this lockdown to try and keep me um hopeful and therefore courageous and brave enough to get out of bed in the morning i make sure that i focus on something that i'm really grateful for something that can give me hope when i have it all written down you know one day after the other one thing every day that i'm grateful for and when i look back over it after the week or even the month or 
turning into nearly a year now, I can see a whole heap of things that I'm grateful for and a whole heap of things that keep me going and um, give me a reason to get up tomorrow. So uh, my message for you is to stay hopeful and to do one thing every day that makes you realise what you're grateful for. And of course, because we're people of faith, we get to be extra grateful. We get to be grateful for the fact that our faith assures us that our hope is fulfilled. So stay hopeful, everybody, and stay joyful.